shower and today I'm going to be interviewing my mom more of her shower. So tell us a bit about yourself and why are you running for office? All right. Well, as you said, I'm Maura Hershauer and I'm your mom. I'm running for um, the Illinois House of Representatives in the 49th District. I am a former elementary school teacher, a community leader, and an, um, I was a founding member of our local Moms Demand Action Group for Gun Sense in America in Kane and Kendall County, so in this area. So um, my path to politics has been paved by this, um, I have a belief in public education and the importance it is in our society. I have a strong belief in community service and advocacy. And actually, Maggie is part of a reason why I really decided to take this journey. And it's because um, as we worked in Moms Demand Action, getting set up and um, meeting different state and local legislators, um, Maggie would come with me. She came with me to Springfield and she spoke about um, lockdown drills in her school. And she prepared a beautiful statement for our state senator, which she gave. And then she was invited by our state Congress, our local Congresswoman, Lauren Underwood, to go all the way to Washington, D.C. Um, to, to give that same statement at a press conference about, and it was about um, lockdown drills, right? What did yeah. you talk about? I talked about how lockdown drills have been change, changed throughout since I was in first grade. Now I'm in sixth grade. Um, since fourth grade, really, they've got, they, we didn't just hide in the classroom while they led to us. We got a presentation about what to do if there was an active shooter. And it's much different and scarier. So Maggie wanted to let people know, the people in charge know that um, lockdown drills are scary. And that in school you're now taught to fight back with your books or scissors or, um, you know, really prepare for an active shooter in school. So she wanted to share that with um, the decision makers and you know I've been so proud of her for raising her voice um, but at the same time I sort of thought man all these children children just like Maggie um, are raising their voices and sort of screaming at the top of their lungs for the people in charge to listen to them because they see changes that need to be made and they want to make those changes so um, it motivated me to run for office to be um, a change maker for our children so that they um, they don't have to scream so loud, that we can pick up the mantle for them and um, make safe communities, um, protect our environment, and just um, treat people with dignity and justice. So that's one of the reasons why I'm running for office. Um, how, let's pause. Um, what talents do you bring to the office in Springfield? Ooh, what talents? Well. As a parent and the leader of a household, I really understand the importance of creating a budget and sticking to it, you know? Um, same thing um, as an elementary school teacher, I had to create a budget for my classroom and really stretch those dollars to make sure that our students had all the supplies they needed to be successful. And as the president of the Batavia Mothers Club Foundation, um, I have worked with a lot of different types of budgets, um, allocating funds to different places and really critically thinking about the needs of people in this district and stretching those dollars so we can make the most out of them. So I think that will come in handy uh, while I'm representing the people of the 49th district. Um, and as the daughter of lifelong educators and union members, you know, I was taught from a young age to put people first and be of service to my community. And that's what I have tried to do my entire life, whether it is as um, a teacher or a Girl Scout leader, um, you know, community service is important. And in the classroom, I bet you've noticed that your teachers um, are always putting people first. They um, have a diverse group of students that they need to create, um, you know, different differentiated lesson plans for and goal-centered learning. Um, and I think those skills will come in very handy in Springfield. And, um, you know, your teachers, they always have to think on their feet, right? Mm -hmm. Problems come up quickly, and um, they have to be really good problem solvers. And I think I am a very good problem solver. And then, of course, nobody multitasks like a mom. Nobody can talk on the phone and make dinner and mm -hmm. oversee homework. 
Um, those might seem like trivial things, but multitasking is something I'm very good at, and I think it will serve me well. And um, nobody fights like a mother either. Fighting for justice and equality and a country that you know my children can be proud of and will um, be safe and healthy to inherit, that's really important to me. So I will fight as hard for you as I do for my kiddos. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on, on changing the state's current flat <coughs> income tax to a progressive income tax? All right, that's a big question for you. Yeah. <laughs> for you, mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing you know that my job every day now for the past year has been meeting voters and talking to them on the phone, meeting them safely, socially distanced when I can. And the number one thing um, we talk about is our um, heavy burden of taxes. You know, it's um, unsustainable, it's not fair, and people are really suffering. So something needs to change. And the fair tax question is on your ballot, and it's a change you can choose to make. Um, in my eyes, as a former educator, um, I see that we have a need for a sustainable and stable um, source of revenue for our schools, because um, at the state level in Illinois, we have been failing our schools and not fully funding them um, the way that we should. So um, what I see the fair income tax um, to be is a way um, to garner sustainable revenue that um, will help our students who are really our number one priority in Illinois um, and they are the future. So again, it's your choice to make. Um, you know, we need to provide relief for our middle class and the fair tax is on your ballot and you can choose, um, you can choose to provide relief that way. So um, that's the fair income tax. Very nice. Um, what do you, how do you plan on balancing the fiscal realities with the social needs of the state? Right. So fiscal, you understand what fiscal means? Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. It's paying your bills and being responsible with your money. So when you get um, your allowance, you know, and you want to go to the candy shop, which you do, yeah. <laughs> and you want to spend it all at the candy shop, is that the most responsible way to spend your money? Yeah. No. So it's the very same thing at the state level with just a much larger budget. Um, we need to spend our money responsibly. Um, so we need fiscal responsibility and social responsibility. And I don't think they need to be mutually exclusive. We can put the needs of people first um, in a fiscally responsible way. Um, that starts with trust and transparency, making sure that you trust me, um, you know, to be honest with where your tax dollars are going. And it, it starts with centering people's needs. You know, our small businesses need support. Our schools and teachers need support. Um, you know, we need uh, critical services for our seniors, you know, Meals on Wheels and, and access to programs like that. Those are programs that help people thrive. So I think we can be very careful with our money and put it in the right places. And it's about trust and transparency. Okay. Um. Do you support the Clean Energy Jobs Act? I do. Um, CJA, I think, is a really wonderful piece of legislation. As a parent, as a mom, um, you know, the future of our environment and the health of our planet um, weighs heavily on me because in 30 years, when you're my age, um, I wonder what our planet will look like. And I want you and your friends and all the children to inherit a clean, healthy planet and so we need to act now um, and you know the legislation put forth in CJA pushes us towards clean energy um, it would make Illinois a leader in clean energy which I think is something that would be a wonderful thing for us to do and it centers people in the legislation it prioritizes um, making new jobs um, for people who might be left behind um, it centers you know um, supporting you know, the local neighborhoods and communities that have been adversely affected by climate change. So centering people and legislation is always important to me, and CJ does that. So I think it's important, um, you know, to really take climate change seriously um, for your sake, honestly. We gotta start acting, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay, what actions are necessary to improve ethics of Springfield? All right, ethics. 
what do you think about when you think about ethics? I think about doing the right thing and telling the truth. And yeah, absolutely. And I am um, sitting here as a mother next to my daughter, um, you know, telling you that we need real serious reform. Um, in our house, lying is not okay. Honesty is the most important thing, and trusting each other is paramount. And um, those things have been lacking in Springfield for a long time, decades, and people have lost trust um, in the leaders. And I think that that's really sad, and um, we need strong bipartisan ethics reform. You know, there has been corruption and um, on both sides, and we need to come together, Democrats and Republicans and independents, and we need to change the system. So we need to stop politicians from becoming lobbyists. We need to make sure um, that leaders who are, you know, indicted for crimes are made to repay their debts to the taxpayers. Um, we need to protect the middle class from, from corrupt politicians. And um, I don't stand for corruption. I just don't. So I am really um, looking forward to changing the culture of Springfield and enacting real, true ethics reform. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you would like to say? Oh, we're almost done? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you for, for sitting with me today to do this. Um, I guess I would just like to say, you know, that um, the things that are important to me are the same things that are important to the people of the 49th District. Uh, I want to make sure that we all can thrive, that we all have access to health care, that our public schools are excellent and um, really creating the, the leaders of our future. Uh, I, I would like to, you know, just restore trust in, in Springfield again. Um, I'm a regular person, I'm a mom, I'm a teacher, and I represent dependable leadership for Springfield. Um, I'm committed to working for you, for your family, bringing your voice with me, and really showing the type of empathetic leadership that I think we need in the world right now. I am, you know, listening, I am putting people first, and um, I think that's important. So if you would like to find out more, you can look at our website, votemora.com, and our social media, and you can join our community-powered team. Um, it's fun on the campaign trail, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little wild and crazy. But it's fun. But it's fun. All right. So thanks, Mary. You're welcome.